Hi, I'm Izzy Barrett. I'm the Artistic Director of the National Youth Jazz Collective. Welcome to this week's hashtag National Youth Jazz Wednesday. Our opportunity to catch up with artists, young musicians, people that are out there in the jazz scene, so record labels, promoters, venues, composers. Uh, and we've got a fantastic guest with us today who I will be introducing shortly, and I'm really excited. I haven't seen our guest since the summer school of 2018, I think, where we worked together up in Pocklington. Uh, and Nick, come and join us. You were, that was the first time that you came to join NYJC on the other side of being a student was Pocklington, wasn't it? That is that is very, very true. Hello, everybody. Good evening and welcome to Hashtag National Youth Jazz Wednesday. Um, yeah, Pock Pocklington was um, when I first came uh, as an intern to, to NYJC. That's that's very true. And uh, we made a lovely little video. So if people want to see that, that's on our YouTube. And it was a lovely montage of uh, the week itself. And one of the things I remember is actually it was Tom Houston's 30th birthday that week. And, yes. um, and we had a little party for him and it involved a little bit of Cuban dancing. And I remember Tori Freestone was amazing at that as well. So uh, we had a fantastic time there and all sorts of adventures. And now fast forward, here we are in between that summer school and the one that's coming up. We've had a pandemic that's prevented us from doing anything. And finally, we're being let out. And we've yes. just had three days. Tell us, everybody, about the three days we've had. Definitely. We're three days into our 13-day audition tour. So we've only been in London so far. But that's all going to change from Saturday, where we go down to Southampton, then to Oxford, then to Bristol, Exeter, Birmingham, Manchester, Newcastle, Leeds, Cambridge, and then finally back to London. And we are so excited. Oh, we're super excited. We've met some absolutely like tremendous, lovely musicians so far, um, and we can't wait to meet more of them going around the country. And actually, one of the things is being the people that did our online summer school last year, um, to actually see them in person for the first time, um, which is just fantastic. It was really nice. And, um, and also to reunite some of the tutors, because some of the tutors were on the panels, and then one of their group who'd been online walks in, uh, and then we're meeting in person and we heard some great music. We had the fantastic um, Tom Hewson and Sam Watts and uh, Will Barry on piano accompanying everybody. Yeah, it was fantastic. I have to say, it did feel very odd at the end of the day to still have the mask on your face. And uh, mm -hmm. it felt like you were constantly grappling with an octopus. But uh, that was a small price to pay. Definitely. So thank you again, Nick, for putting together such an amazing schedule as well. And as we say, we should be leaping on the train on Saturday to head down to Southampton. And the other thing is how amazing all the venues have been as well uh, in really um, making sure that they can guarantee that everything's going to be COVID safe. So mm -hmm. I was fascinated by the ventilation, the fact that everybody's opting for one of two options to, to make sure that we get uh, fresh air, either by opening the windows or through the uh, air conditioning. So that was very reassuring. 100%. <laughs> the other thing we've been doing is getting the contract ready for our new COO who starts mid-June. So when we get back from the audition tour, we'll be welcoming her. And uh, and also the board have been very proactive with helping us towards the 15th birthday as well. So lots of exciting things happening and um, meeting with all our partners about the teaching videos, which we will start filming as soon as we get back from the audition tour. So a lot's happening and it was really lovely the way that everybody was so grateful when we saw them and everybody was saying thank you so much for still you know for always fighting our corner and making things happen so I think it's going to be an amazing time in Repton I'm very excited about the week when we finally get there in August <laughs> but the, the other thing that I'm really excited about every Wednesday is the fact that we get the opportunity to talk to amazing guests and as, you, as we remember, um, when we were up there in Pocklington, we had the wonderful Omar Puente with us, and I'm going to invite him to the stage now. Omar, come and speak to us and say hello. <laughs> hello. Hey, so everybody. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. How are you doing, guys? Yeah. So good yes. to see you. Yes, it's been a long time now. Three years. Three years. Oh, fly time, yes. And you've moved really down fly. to London now? Yes, we've been to London now after, yes. Uh, you know, I've been based in, in the north, in Bradford, for so, so many years. But now, you know, life is like that. I live in London now, doing my teaching here, my playing. And it's good, it's good. I can really enjoy it, uh, go back to, to London and meet some old friends, been here and do the teaching in Trinity, in schools. 
uh, prepare music, album. Well, with the COVID at the moment, it's not like we want, there's not like a lot that we could possibly do, but it's still, we can create some music uh, at home. We can, and it won't be long now. We'll soon be out. And once we finish our audition tour, we'll we'll give you a shout and invite you down to King's Place so we can have a proper reunion face to face. Oh, that would be brilliant! Fantastic! That was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, 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 yeah. So tell Wait. us what when what obviously I know you well, and we've spoken about things, but there are little bits of your story that I never had the opportunity to ask you about, and I know yeah. people watching would be fascinated. So when yeah. when did you move from Cuba? Well, I came in the UK about in the 1998, 1999, a couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I came here and went straight to, to the north, to uh, where I've been uh, with Debbie. And I'm um, with working in teaching at Leeds College of Music and doing the touring and playing and learning and adaptive for the new culture, mm -hmm. the Georgia culture, with the <laughs> intet, instead of in it, the intet, and the cup of tea, and the Georgia cup of tea. Uh, <laughs> that was a really nice time. I met fantastic musician over there. So I joined the band called Casa Latina. Mm -hmm. That was one of the, the, the first band I joined as when they came to this country. Um, it was really amazing the combination of different background with the Cuban music, with the jazz involved, with the all the combination musician from Manchester, musician for Leeds. Uh, so we come together and we create. Uh, well, that was the band already. But this was uh, musician for Chile as well, who live in here, David Munoz, and Sam Bell on the congas. Um, was really nice uh, team of musicians. Put together and we do a lot of tour we play amazing play play spaces we play jazz cafe we put a new repertoire i was really really good a really really good spirit for me uh, arriving so i was really welcome in bradford and really really welcome with the band to be part of this amazing musician where in all of that did you meet alex wilson uh, uh, Alex Wilson. I think we met. Uh, I met Alex Wilson playing with Roberto Plas. I really believe. Oh yeah, playing with Roberto Plas uh, many moons ago. And um, we just, Roberto Plas, the you know the, 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 the one of the yeah. biggest name of the Latin music in the UK and in the world. So you see, the guy is uh, like a legend. So I was lucky to be part of this band. Uh, mainly jazz band, Latin jazz band, brass, not really violin. But, you know, I think uh, with Alfredo La Fe, he did a lot of in, um, in America uh, with the violin. But I was lucky enough to go there and play, um, do a bit of singing, play it, met Alan Wilson. And since, we become really good friends. And we've been doing a lot of projects, in fact, we we put together we, re, uh, uh, we put together a, a book called "Play Violin the Cuban Way." So ah. yeah, uh, which is basically in four style of music: cha cha cha, danzo, guaracha son, um, uh, danzo. So yeah, since we've been doing a lot of playing, we play even different. Uh, format and uh, we play with Courtney Pine together we play uh, said do it we're going to do some concert now uh Peace Express with the trio mm -hmm. so it's still we do a lot of playing um recording and collaboration it's an amazing guy so I think it'd be really lovely to hear that you've sent a video that's got the two of you playing I think for the audience because there's a lot of people who are watching this is the first time that they'll have heard you play. So I think it would okay. be good to introduce them to you. And I think that's a lovely first video to share. Might you tell us a bit about what the, what the pieces that you're going to play? Yeah, yeah. How this it is, came about. Uh, this is a, a piece that I wrote called Danzo Gloria. That uh, piece is the, I dedicate to my mother. 
And the dance song is the Cuban national dance, which is the closest to the classical rondo, had the mm -hmm. same sequence, A, B, A, C, A, D. So inspired my mom, I wrote that dance song, and, and we play at the King's Place, at the concert I did, so Omar Puente and, and friends. So I buy alone um, Darren Taylor on the bass, and uh, uh, Alice Wilson on the piano, um, and the percussion I think was Oscar, which you are now I to see the video, uh, myself of the violin. So I hope you like it, and it's called like that, Danzón Gloria. And the Danzón rhythm, has it got a particular rhythm that it's based yeah, on? Yes, but in fact, uh, the Danzón have a, a A bar, four and four intro, who repeat twice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the first time is uh, the, the four bar, and then it's like a part, and the second time is like a improvisation, could be the piano, could be the flute. Mm -hmm. And then it's a second part, which is the called the flute uh, paseo, it's like uh, the, the flute part. So the flute player really uh, do the best on on the on, on the music and then go back again to the intro and there's the violin part so the violin had the best opportunity to to show the ability and to be honest most of the dance songs they've been written with the really difficult patterns um, and hard to play yeah so you really had to get a good technique to 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 do it right and then is a Montuno section, is when the, um, the percussion for first time use the cowbell before everything just a, a pattern. Like that. On the congas, on the widow, and back in the time, we use just one conga. Yeah, just one conga. Nowadays, two congas. So the Montuno session is the, the part with the, the solos. So there's full on. You can do the proper piano solo, flute solo, violin solo, or an instrument to be played in the song in this particular time. What I said before, in that particular moment, it's the first time the, 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 the percussionist play the cowbell with a particular pattern. It was like that. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five. So how you see it's a structure, it's a A bar, repeat 60 bar, a flu session, go to the intro, violin session, go to the intro, Montuno section is going like ram, pam, 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 and then the Montuno. At the end have a nice coda, a coda who a, a bar. And it's important that at the very end, it has to be like that. We have this pattern, ta -ta, have to wait. Mm -hmm. ta -ta -ta. So it's interesting. You have to see it, feel it, and then you yeah. see what's up. Great. Yeah. Let's take it away. We'll have a listen. Take it away. In a few minutes. Enjoy, hey. everybody. <laughs>
think? Usually we just let things run for <laughs> three or four minutes, but I just felt that it was be it was really important to show the whole five minutes because there's so much that's going on within there. And the main things that I think that are really important to highlight are, first of all, the balance between the strictly notated and the improvised. Exactly. exactly. And the um, the the very you know proficient way in which everybody in the band is able to do both but yeah, they, yeah. you can read and you can also improvise and then the other thing that i think is really important to highlight is the the incorporation of pre-existing rhythms and making it making it your own and the fact that the two, all of you know those so that there's that common material that you're able to draw on but also the technical proficiency with which you play. And I'd like to unpack all those, if I may, and talk to you about all the different bits yeah, to find yeah. out how they came to be. So if that's okay with you, yeah, may I yeah, fire yeah, a few yeah. questions? Then what I said that it's important also for, uh, for everyone to know that you go to stage, you play, and you have a good time. Mm -hmm. And you perform because it's a crowd waiting for you to, to give that extra so uh, well if you're lucky have good musician good instrument you play you have a good time and it's a it's a great feeling when you got these three combination together mm -hmm. and and you create that and this is what the people want this is what we all want to get a really good result um technical ability knowledge harmonically but joy i have yeah. a great time Definitely. A, Definitely. That was happening in there. Yeah. So mm -hmm. notice that I've been comparing some uh, on my solo, some elements of the classical music, not just on the, the syncopation or improvising with the rhythm or improvising with the syncopation. I've been using some also uh, classical elements like mm -hmm. double stop and still like that, which fits really good. So one more time, music is music. Mm -hmm. So you can separate one thing to the other. So they say A, the same B, they say C sharp, they say B flat. Mm -hmm. But if you can be able to put on the right place, it's like that. So in Cuba, as you're growing up in general, how aware are people of all the different types of, of um, rhythmic grooves and feels? So could people, do people talk about it in a way where you hear dance music and people can say, oh, I can, and I know, they can identify what the groove is and, and what the clave patterns are. Or is it something that you learn more when you're studying music? I'm just, just trying to work out how part of everyday culture all of these feels well, are. Like if I went to I, a bar and then I danced to something, would I know a certain I, rhythm that, see what I mean? I can tell you in Cuba, people eat music, work music, drink music, and talk music. <laughs> so music is part of the, our life, mm -hmm. culturally. So of course that we have the East a particular rhythm, and the West particular rhythm, and the Middle particular rhythm. But uh, I mean, like really, if you would want to get the deepest of, you know, the Changui in Guantanamo and things like that, mm -hmm. the song, the dance song, but I think I will really believe that the knowledge of music, of the Cuban music, uh, is really, really, really big. So people identify, identify, and recognize the clave, when there's a, a cha cha cha, the cha 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 pattern, the dance song, the guajira, the Latin jazz. The, so I think this is well, even now, reggaeton. Right, you demonstrate what those each with what each of those rhythms are, just so that people can see. So, I mean, what because you know, young some of the people that are watching here are sort of eight and nine years old, so yeah. haven't yet had the chance. So, what a cha cha cha, what a clave is, what just maybe four or five sort of typical rhythms. Yeah, four is it. Let's 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 try on the violin, right? I don't think I hear right. The cha 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 is a a, a, a way to play who have this pattern like. Cha cha cha, one two. Cha cha cha, one two. Cha cha cha, one two. In fact, the composer, the creator of the cha cha cha, was the composer called Enrique Jorin. He was uh, inspired of the way the dancer dance and the way he moved the, the the shoes on the dance floor 
to create So this is the party. So of course, the parties combined with the um, the rhythm with the widow, with the congas, with the piano, the syncopation. Notice on the on the Alex improvisation, he used some pattern on the cha cha cha, like ta cha 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 cha. Similar that on the piano, of course, it's not a piano. For ta, this part, ta 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 ta, that's combined with the widow and the syncopation create that sound, the cha cha cha. And for instance, let's say the song. It's important to have him really clear the clave. So the clave is not only the two stick hitting the each other. Is the, the the spine of the music? Da, da. This is clave three two, clave two three, three two three beat in one bar, two beat in the bar, two three vice versa, two beat in one bar, three beat in the bar. Did we hear that because I don't think people necessarily know what that three two two three sounds like. So let's say clave the three two. We mm -hmm. have one two three, one two. One, two, three, one, two. Yeah. So we have in one bar three beats. One, two, three, another bar, one, two. And the two, three clave, which is more on the rumba, the one one core, is all the way around. So we have two and three. So we have dun, dun, So I'm going to play for you. On, I will try to play the piano part on the violin, which is quite hard to do, eh? <laughs> so let's do it fat. All right. So, so you see it right. Oh, sorry. So what we have two. Yeah, so we have. So we can incorporate the bass line. Ta, ta. Ta, ta. to play the piano on the bass and on the violin. For one person, <laughs> that <is> that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so to play the bass line and the piano part on that. But the good thing about the keyboard music is uh, the syncopation. It's syncopation everywhere, on the piano, on the bass, on the congas, on the... But if you play it right, they go together. And sometimes, in most of the cases, is not the one and two, the important bit in the given music. It's the three and the four sometimes. Mm -hmm. So for instance, on the dance song case, we have one, two, dun, 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 one. For instance, we have one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. And, and so on. But it's the syncopation uh, who um, make the whole concept really nice. But as I said before, if everything goes right, it's like tight and it's beautiful. It's so what we get with the key of music. And that's why the rhythm is so important because it's that locking together, isn't it? It's the locking together. So we have a lot of parties from, to be really honest, from West Africa. So incorporated and you know 
we had the, the music for Africa and then developing Cuba again different way. Different way. So we have for Guantanamo, the one party for Santiago, one party for Havana, one party for it's still son and then son. Who Orina was, you know, even the rumba, which is so rich. The rumba, the Wawanko, the Columbia, or just genre of the Wawanko. So we can get that uh, and you can feel the 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 vibe, the vibration of the the percussion, which is uh, the drums to be always part of most um, style of music. So definitely the, the, the drums is one of the most important pattern of Cuban music and Latin music, even in Latin jazz in general. Fantastic. I'm just reading some little messages from Casey because she's going to come and ask you some questions and okay. I want to be sure that I don't ask the same questions as well. So uh, I tell you what, let's let's invite her to the stage and ask yeah. her to ask some of those questions and then I'd like to take you way back in time uh, oh, okay. as well. But first of all, come and join us, Casey. So Casey was on the summer school and hey, we Casey. met online. Hello, Casey. Hello. Um, and you're actually auditioning again this year for the summer school, so we get to meet in person at the audition, and hopefully we get to meet in person on the summer school as well. So there's um, the last question that you sent about the first jazz musician. Might you ask that? Yeah. Um, what was the first jazz? No. Who was the <laughs> first jazz musician you listened to? Who was it? What? Who was the first jazz musician you ever listened to? Well. To be honest, um, okay, uh, Miles came to, to my life, Miles Davis, uh, John Coltrane as well, but Miles, I seem was the first. However, it uh, was a lot of influence of ja uh, Brazilian music in my life, but one, one band, who changed the whole Omar Puente. And that band's called The Weather Report. Hey, totally. That band had amazing musician. I still remember when I saw that band live and uh, people just left the theater. I was sitting there like, I couldn't believe what I heard. Musicians like Jaco Pastorio on the, on the bass, Sawinol on the piano, Peter Esky on the drums. Oh, amazing. Well, yeah, theme musician like Miles. And then um, Jean Luc Pontic, which is one of the most uh, revolutionary on the jazz and the violin. Well, Stefan Grappelli was the most popular a violin player on the jazz uh, scene in that time. And then one scene to the other. So, yeah. That follows on nicely to the second question, doesn't it? About jazz violinists. Would you like to ask that question? Yeah, I was going to ask, who's your favorite jazz violinist? My favorite jazz violinist? It's hard to tell. It's really hard to tell because everyone can bring something different, even the youngest one. So you have a young, talented musician who can play amazingly. So it's hard to say, you know, that one. It's same like classical music. Can I say, okay, what's your preferred violin player in the classical music? That'd be Ostrak, Kogan. Everyone brings something different onto the play. So I don't want to say it's, you know, one or the other. What I do is like, I hear everything, I hear everybody, and absorb the best for everyone, and I enjoy the music. But it's not just the violin player, flute player, piano player, trumpet player, sax player. So I hope that you I answered your question. So yes, I just listen everything, and I don't think I have a, a favorite violin player. All of them can bring something uh, to us. Yeah. Before, before we do the third question, you just touched on um, 
different instruments and the different instrumentalists who you enjoy working with. And uh, I think it'd be lovely to go to the second video that you've sent in that involves a singer where you're at King's Place. Yes, yes. Might you tell yes, us a little yes. bit about that? And then we'll come back and ask a few more questions. So might you tell us about that video that we're going to watch? Well, that was an amazing vocalist, uh, Randall Matthew, which is a British uh, vocalist, uh, amazing vocalist. So um, I think music has in the beginning have no frontier. So uh, vocal, the voice is the closer to the violin, they said, but not only the, the closer. So if you can incorporate and, and work and collaborate with all the musicians, um, you can really create something different. Everyone can bring something different. A bass player, a trumpet player, a flicker horn player. So that was a particularly uh, great experience combining now technology. So I've been using now electric violins with the pedals, with the uh, uh, harmonizer. So you, you know, put the music at another level mm -hmm. because music have no, it's just the sky. <laughs> it's the sky. So you, if you put your imagination in there, it's just the sky. The, the limit. So um, that guy is amazing vocalist. So also have a great musician play with us that particular tune. And um, what's a combination of the vocal, violin, harm, harmonic, harmonizing, uh, electric violin, pedals, sound effect, and music. So might you introduce who the musicians are that are playing with you on that and then the name of the piece and then we'll go straight to the video. I think the tune's called Candomblé. Um, I think on the piano was Alex as well. I believe uh, Darren Taylor on the bass. Um, I think it was uh, Flavio Correa on the congas, Oscar Martinez on the percussion as well and Fernando on the drums, I believe. Uh, and yes, called Candomblé. Take it away. Take it away. Thank you. 
And do you know what's really great is seeing, like you say, all the joy and the interconnectedness. And at the moment, I'm having a wonderful time with the, the Royal Conservatory of Scotland. I'm one of, I'm their examiner, and so it's the recitals and the performances. And the thing that um, I constantly comment on is when people are not just being rhythmically in their own individual playing, but when they're playing rhythmically and then another band member leaps on it and then the two become really connected through the rhythm and the drive. And I find that that's something that when we first started out, you know, when I was a youngster, I really missed that. I loved rhythmic music. I love Stravinsky. I yeah. love Bartok. And, and, and then when I saw improvisers play, I think, wow, isn't it great? These, these great melodies that people are improvising over harmony but the bit I was missing was the there was not much of a rhythmic element to their playing and I feel that um, a lot of the sort of the Latin scene a lot of Indian musicians and, yes. and also even the New York scene of jazz I feel was giving me that that rhythmic um, food you know and it's <laughs> <laughs> no, yes definitely you see the joy in the joy in there so uh, you play you see, the, you see the, the beauty of the improvised music that you can fit each other. Sometimes they give me a puppet to do something. And then, of course, it's no pray plan. It's just what's happened on the stage. And uh, he gave me some material. So I give you some material back. And then we can create, if we were all on the same page, we can create something unique. And that, something that is unique. And the way that uh, musicians, when that happens, and it's happened several, on both the videos you've showed, it's happened. And that coming together for me, that's very much like when people are sitting having a meal together and the conversation and the humour is going and everybody is suddenly in that moment of humour and it becomes a group laugh, exactly. not just laughing at one person. Exactly. And it's the same with that, that euphoria and that joy. And like you say, that that's such an important part of the performance. Is it what I'm saying that we are so lucky that we are musicians we are able, we're able to play an instrument or any instrument vocal so we can express ourselves we can uh, with knowledge uh, collaborate with different uh, style of music in the house to you india um jazz rock mm -hmm. anything and um create sounds and momentum that it just at that particular time is that probably never repeat again, just Absolutely. that particular time. So we have that opportunity that 
some other people can do it, but well, you know, it's like that. But we are so lucky, and I encourage my students to to see the music like that, to enjoy the music, to absorb the best for everyone, to give everything to the crowd because people want to see you play and they want to have a good time. So let the people when I get out of the concert hall with a smile. That is the goal. That is the goal as a performance. So yes. So I'm going to invite Casey back because okay, I'm Casey. sure that we don't know. Um, some people viewers, some of the viewers have seen Casey a couple of times over the last 12 months because we've been online every week and we've done a few conversations, but I don't think everybody has quite registered, Casey, that you're studying at Cheatham School of Music. Yeah. Which is great. Has and um and then you've only only just today, hot off the press, you've heard that you've also been offered a place at the Junior Academy, Junior Jazz Academy, which is very exciting as well. So congratulations about that, first of all. Bravo. And uh, and I'm wondering uh, all the things that um, Omar's now talking about, especially the joyousness of people coming together and uh, you know communally making music. Um, uh, I'm wondering and the rhythmic side of playing as well. Some of the things that you saw Omar do on the violin. And I'm wondering what your response to all of that is, and sort of how it how your own music me making feels with all of that in mind at the moment? Is it something that you have already found the opportunity to be joyous with other musicians, play very rhythmically, something you'd like to explore? Um, yeah, it's, it's very, it's, sorry, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering in your own playing, right. <laughs> whether you've had opportunities to explore more rhythmic side of things within the violin. So, because as I was saying, a lot of people just yeah. play crotchets and minims and then they create beautiful melodies, but the rhythmic side often gets forgotten about. So I'm just wondering if there's anything like, do you play in a gypsy? Have you played in a bar top? Is there, you know, places that you found, you know, great rhythm? Um. Well, I'll tell you, the art musician like Prokofiev, that have a lot of rhythm on the music. Uh, but I, I 100% that little by little, you will find different way to, to, to play the music and improvise music, melodic way, harmonic way, the rhythmical, rhythmical way, combination of all of that. So just little by little, you will find the richness of the improvised music. So take a little bit of time. And also I know because I've, I've been there, some of the classical musicians, the most classical we used to just play the music. So as soon as you see no music or just chord sequence like, uh oh, it's the end. It's not, it's fun. It's, I tell you, really good fun because you put all your imagination on, on places. So, Having heard you play, Casey, you're a very rhythmic player and you, you, you know, there's lots of, when you've been transcribing solos and copying certain musicians, you can hear that you're really drawn to rhythm. You play in a very rhythmic way. So maybe it's just, it's so natural to you that you've not really had a chance to think about it. <laughs> Probably, yes. Yeah, sometimes like that, you just do it. You don't know you've been doing it. You just do it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. So um, yeah. how did you, because before you moved from Cuba, you were principal, you were the viol principal violinist of the Cuba, National Cuban... Well, I played the Cuban okay. Symphony Orchestra and then uh, I did the role for a while and then went out and then do play trio and then quartet and then on the classical music and then I joined the uh, really good band uh, playing classical and um, Afro-Cuban style together. And uh, I learned a lot of this band. We started traveling and then I had the opportunity to join a uh, orchestra like the one I mentioned before, the Enrique Jorin, the creator of the Cha Cha Cha, so really young guy, no mustache. So I learned with the, the greatest musician there. I had the opportunity to play and perform 
uh, with Ruben Gonzalez, D. Ruben Gonzalez, Buena Vista Social Club. And also I learned with the oldest people play the, the Cuban music, the real Cuban music. So for me, that was a really um, good opportunity to absorb uh, all this knowledge for the olders. So it's not like school, just by listening. And they say, no, it's not like that. It's like that. Uh, learned by a, a gentleman who played the widow, but he knows exactly what they're doing. So that was a nice process of learning. So in one end, I went to school to do the classical part. On my way to the school, I just remember part for this place with playing guitar every morning. <laughs> So I mean, listen to that, and then um, little by little was the jazz festival in Havana. Listen, musicians like Chucho Valdez, Arturo Sandoval, the Iraqueres band, that was a revolution, that music. And then influence from Brazil music, uh, Gal Costa, Elif Regina, uh, Gaetano Veloso. So it was like, wow, so much influence. And then Miles Davis on the other end, and then um, David Oystra played Tchaikovsky concert. And then it was like, wow, so much information. Which uh, was great for me, it was great. So it was until later that I discovered that I have all this knowledge. And um, was like, hey, hang on. And ding, 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 ding. Every since time come out. And uh, I, am, I am really had to say thank you, my teacher, to, to they put me the, the right hand in the right place, but also uh, uh, the opportunity to to play with great musicians like Robert Mitchell, McDonald, uh, Darren Taylor, uh, Courtney Pine, uh, Jason Yard, and so many, so many musicians uh, that Alice Wilson that have opportunity to um, Roberto Pla. Uh, King, uh, King Salsa, um, so many musicians and artists that I've been learning and also uh, giving my, my, my part. So also had the opportunity to play with um, uh, Winston Marsalis in, in London. That, wow. that, was, that was a really nice uh, opportunity to perform. Play up to the opportunity to play with Tito Puente once, also with the you know, or Eddie Palmieri. So I've been um, has been a really nice uh, part of my life. Of course, music is like a road full of bump, but you know you all would leave it there. But really happy the experience playing with all musicians, and now giving my best in Trinity College. Uh, is now I am a, a student examiner of the Guildhall Conservatoire, um, teaching different school, even the kids really tiny. So I give you the the tools to in Illy Music, in the Hackney Music, Hackney Music, uh, Illy Music Service, uh, Hackney Music Service, and the the the, the little to give you the, the the tools for the very beginning of the classical and the jazz and all this element the one day there was oh i remember that somebody told me that when it was yeah there. definitely is there a little something that you teach the beginners and when you're playing with the younger is there a little melody or something that you well yes yeah, see, see like a uh, uh, simple like let's say mm, uh, 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 yeah. Four finger D. <laughs> oh. More short. Just that. That little pattern makes mm -hmm. different. The play.
change it into Bearden. <laughs> Can you remember what the first thing was you learnt on the violin, or roughly? I do. I do remember the first time I heard my first concert. Do remember? That's really great. Whoa. <laughs> so Whoa. um see that <laughs> thing that always couldn't be with me. And I'll be talking about a couple of months ago. Yeah. Many months ago. I do remember. <laughs> Well, I think Casey's going to come back and she's got a little something that she'd like to play for oh, us. Oh, really? Ah, uh, that was nice. Do you want to do it? What are you going to play for us, Lovey? Great. Okay. So, so nice to come home to. I'm going to put myself on mute and take the miss. Okay. Go for it, Lovey. Your lines are just really on it, and there's lovely inflections. Really great. Omar, come and join us again. Thank you so much for playing that. That really lifted my spirit. I really needed that. Because even though we're gradually coming out of lockdown, it's very slow, and there's not, you know, we can't access everything. So to hear some lovely playing and to be in the moment as well, to be so spontaneous. I think Omar might be having problems turning his video back on, Nick. So might you give him a hand? Here we are. What do you think of that, Omar? It's amazing. That's very good. Excellent. And the, you know, the, the, the way that you did swinging this there, the, all this. Uh, <laughs> the swing is great. The movement, the up and down. The. That is really, 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 really good. Well done. When in... How old are you? I'm 13. Whoa, that's brilliant. Thank you. That's absolutely fantastic. The swing there, the two on the four, just the swim. So in the pocket, isn't it? The piece of the, yeah. And uh, moving the, 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 the whole tone scale and everything. Whoa. <laughs> I think it's better. Very good. Who's the, who's the teacher that you've got at Chet's? Ian Dixon. Oh, great. So you haven't got a violin specific? Because you, the reason is you're um, you really getting to know the idiosyncrasies of the instrument and you're not shy to put them in. You know, it's really lovely. The things that only violin can do, 
you know you're bringing that to the table as well and adding it in which is really great you're being your, your true self yeah definitely indeed yeah i like the the, the fluence i like the 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 confidence you're playing in tune the swim no you know the right style and the right style with the right music voila <laughs> It's like a perfect very good, very good, very good, very good, very good. So, might you tell us both about your book? Because I'm sure that Casey would love to get a copy of your book. Stay yes, with yes. Casey. Uh, I can't believe they have is the with me here now. Sorry. Right. <laughs> yeah. okay. Anyway, uh, the book is called "Play Violin the Cuban Way." Yeah. So, um, uh, yes, it's Alice Wilson and myself. I have four different style of music. So even it's been written the piano part, the violin part, I mean patterns, way to improvise so the music, Cuban music with the, uh, the Cuban style, the percussion pattern, the percussion part of, as I said before, four different styles. So it's not just the violin. Also have the CD, so you have the play alone, so you can listen. Uh, uh, transcribe the solo, it's solo there, so, so we can learn the solo. Um, I think I have a, a lot to, 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 to get, so remember, it's called Play Violin the Cuban Way. So, yes, somewhere. I'm just Googling it on Amazon, and yeah. it's not there. There you go. It's not. So it's we not there. Get, we'll have to get it put on. Yeah, we have to get it put on. We have to talk to the... We to buy it. Yeah, we talk to the 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 the, the publisher, Jazzwise. Oh, Jazzwise. Yes. Right, you are. We'll get we'll get in touch with them and. Um, what, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, to, nice. yeah. we'll share it. Yeah, Jazzwise. So we better talk to them and say, oh, what is the book? So we did two editions. So the last one is more complete. So yeah, I think we will go back to the Jazzwise. I asked them, why is the book? Why is it not on Amazon? Yeah, definitely. exactly. Uh -uh. <laughs> So um, your third question, Casey, was about um, composition. You were going to ask Omar about composition. Might you ask? At what age did you start composing? At what age did I start composing? Right. Um, as such, I did some composition that was like really excited. But I was there, my first step. But at least at this, at this song, uh, at the age of, I don't know, maybe 16, I did some written right in there, but not like really, really, uh, I had to have more knowledge than one, how to find myself to write music. So I put some music and put in there, but it was like, I've been really transcribing a lot and copy for our other musician. I've been copying solo for everyone. <laughs> but uh, I'm listening. I try to get the solo, make it my own, even whistling. Mm -hmm. People solo. Most of the latest in my life when I start to write music. Uh, and um, probably because my traveling I've been putting music with different background. In fact, my last album, it's uh, Best Foot Forward, is a basis in my experience as a musician playing in different parts of the world. Not that I want to be a Brazilian musician or an African musician or an American musician, it's the or Moroccan musician, it's my vision through my violin on those culture. So it's not like I want to pretend to be Jamaican because I am not. But I did write a tune with the Jamaican uh, vibe mm -hmm. on the violin that I don't remember anybody been doing before, maybe, I don't know. But yes, I had this uh, last album it's called Best Foot Forward who have, you know, from Bolero to Brazilian to straight head jazz to African music, 
to Cuba music, to... So yes, I think through my experience traveling and absorbing the, the culture of different country I've been doing my, my writing. But before, I'm more than listening, a lot of listening, uh, a lot of listening, like lots of listening. Um, but at my time was not even CD, it was a tape. <laughs> so I had to tape with the pencil, run, run, run. If it broke, you had to put it together and to come listen again. So, but even so, to be listened with a tape is part of who I am right now. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, now we have internet, we have everything. You just, Alexa, and then boom, everything is coming there. <laughs> but in my time, in our time, was like tape. Absolutely. And LPs, albums. And LPs, yeah. that's it. So it's what we get. And uh, yeah, I did were, enjoy my time. Alexa I, answers questions that I haven't even asked. Every now and again, my Midland accent triggers it off. I could be having a Zoom conversation and not only will the Alexa on my phone go off, but the person that I'm talking to, theirs goes off as well. There's something exactly. <laughs> exactly. my vowels. It's, just... it's, it's ridiculous, but what, <laughs> in, in what, I don't want to be that way. I'm in, in one end, it's very good. You have all the possibility. However, sometimes you have to fight for what you want. That you want to really want it. It's the what I feel like what the, the way I feel. So I want something, I go there and try to get it. Now, I don't know, I ask in my student where you can get that. So on the internet, I see a place called library. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> library, but anyway, today's internet, which is fine. Yeah, you know, I, I don't want to say it's no, it's good. Internet's good. But um, what I said before, uh, I didn't have all the opportunity that we had right now, but I really fight for the one and, and, and I get it. So, if, yeah. Brilliant. So, and I'm pleased well, who I am. One, one last thing is because I think that we don't talk about it very much in the UK. Yeah. And that's the role of dance because you you're a fine dancer and really? uh, and it's something that's very important to you, isn't it? You you do you enjoy dancing. I'm wondering um, if you might share with everybody what place does dance because you know, some people probably haven't been to Cuba and don't know much about Cuba. What place does dance and play and especially dancing as couples? You know the, uh, the social side of dancing. Yeah, I, I think the 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 dance is exactly that like. Um, a join um, way to to tell the way you feel. It don't necessarily be like on your own dancing because you know, but it's a couple. Back in the time, it would be like back to the contra dance. The contra dance came from France through Haiti back to Cuba. The contra dance was danced with as a couple. Are or more people, so they become so France, uh, IT immigrant from Haiti to the east of the country. We still have a lot of uh, uh, family from the Haitian uh, background. Uh, they brought the contra dance. The contra dance become dance on and. It's still in, in, in the couple, and then the cha cha cha, and then the bolero, and then more traditional, more uh, contemporary dance, but mainly uh, on the to join, to have a good time. Now in the UK, well, not right now because the pandemic, but was a lot of places that people just go to learn to dance. Just, just to have fun, yeah, and just, just dance, have a good time. They get, I don't know, uh, because it's quite, quite, um, how the right way. Okay. Invite, invite you to, 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 to energy. Yeah, it's not a sport. I don't want to say like a sport because if you become like a sport, lose the beauty. Yeah. Is just the dance and, and um, 
So I really to... hope. I really hope with the pandemic goes somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Back again, people doing the salsa and doing the rumba and doing the casino. I have a friend, my similar friend, if when I go to Cuba to do some dance in Cuba, I can want to go too, to do some dancing back in there. Um, yeah. Right, so we're going to wrap up. Um, Nick has to be gone by quarter past seven. We're going oh. to wrap up with the last lovely video that you've sent up centers um yeah. so before we do that nick can you come and join us quickly to say about all the different things online of course yeah got reservation at eight o'clock so <laughs> <laughs> brilliant it's, it's the, it. land, the landlord so no but anyway um <laughs> yes if you would like to keep up to date with all things myjc the best place to go and do that is to visit nationalyouthjazz.co.uk forward slash sign up and there you can sign up for our bi-monthly newsletter uh, which will go out to you with all MYJC's news. And it will also uh, subscribe you to our social updates, which tells you who uh, the conversations are happening every Wednesday. And we won't be here uh, next Wednesday, obviously because we're on the audition tour. So stay tuned for who will be coming the week after. Looking forward to seeing you there, Casey. That'd be great. And yeah, um, uh, donating uh, side of things, Nick, if people want to donate. Yes, so if you'd like to support MIJC in its commitment to making its work accessible to all people, no matter what their financial background, uh, please head to nationalyouthjazz.co.uk forward slash donate, where you'll be able to donate to MIJC's uh, 15th birthday fund, where we're trying to raise £15,000 for 15 years of MIJC. And just to remind everybody that I've said that for every pound that people donate, I'll be able, I'm going to match fund it with some of the Tristan Foundation applications I've made. Plus, you get the gift aid. So if you give a pound, it's actually its value is actually two pound twenty five. So there you go. Um, you I go. want first of all ask Casey, how did you enjoy the conversation? It was good. Yeah. It left you with things to go away and explore. Yeah, it was really good. Thank you. You're I'm really welcome. Sorry, I remember. Smile, yes. <laughs> Yay! Yes, smile, playing smile. It's good. Yeah, play smile, have a good time. Enjoy listening to the musician. Sometimes you'll say a zin on the on, on, on the drums can inspire you to do a solo. Listen, everyone, be yourself and enjoy the music. So talking of the music, we're going to sign off with the, the last video, which is the classical piece. Might you tell us about this and introduce it, and then we're we'll going to wish everybody yeah. a wonderful week and see them all in two weeks' time. Yeah, so that last piece, I really believe, was played at the, um, the South Bank with uh, Marcos Madrigal, it's an amazing Cuban piano player, really uh, amazing uh, uh, yeah, Piero Bay, who lived in or work in Italy, I think, a little bit in Italy. And um, I think it's the tune is La Bella Cubana, which is a, uh, uh, it's a really Cuban, uh, a nice Cuban tune. And I hope you enjoy that. It's a uh, really romantic, but have two different parts. And how I said before, music is more than notes on the dot. And I hope you enjoy it. And we'll see you sometime soon. La Bella Cubana de White. <laughs>